Whether it's early in the morning or late at night, countless people all over the world depend on caffeine for a boost of energy. That includes athletes. There's limited information to suggest that modest use of caffeine does have value in certain circumstances for exercise but that the amount of caffeine and some of the other stimulant products that are being consumed are far in excess of not only what's valuable, but also what's safe. Emergency room visits for people who have overdosed on caffeine and other stimulant sources increasing every year. Inside Science. Store shelves teem with energy drinks. They're often right next to the bottled coffees or sports drinks, but the energy drinks are usually regulated differently. They're not inherently bad products. I think they, they just are often overused. It makes people feel like their workouts are better, but reality is when you look at their actual performance, it just doesn't hold water. Some energy drinks contain almost as much caffeine as the largest amount doctors recommend consuming in a day, which is fewer than the caffeine found in about six cups of coffee per day. And pediatricians suggest that kids and adolescents don't consume anywhere near that much. So with a single energy product, depending on which one you have chosen, you may already be in excess of the amount that would be recommended for you. Powdered or anhydrous caffeine can be even more powerful for athletes. They're putting it in their smoothie or whatever else that they're using as their pre-workout intake, and then off to the gym they go, working under the premise that this stuff is going to make them feel incredibly energetic and, and strong and powerful, and they get more out of their workout. The one I'm thinking of in particular, the recommended dose is 1 64th of a teaspoon. Who in the world knows how to measure out 1 64th of a teaspoon? The people who have catastrophic results, it's just a mix of way too much stimulation and the system just can't handle it. Studies have shown that adult athletes can benefit from a modest use of caffeine, but consuming more than the equivalent to a few cups of coffee doesn't improve performance, says McKnight. After about seven or eight cups of diner-style coffee, a 180-pound person might start experiencing side effects. You're getting heart rate elevation, you're getting nervousness and agitation and, and those kinds of things that aren't aiding your sport participation at all. Some athletes also take prescribed stimulants, such as Adderall or Ritalin for attention deficit disorder. These can affect the cardiovascular system and the body's reaction to heat in a similar way to caffeine. You're overstimulated and then try to throw some physical activity on top of that. It's a terrible combination of things. Maybe it's not death, thankfully, in a lot of these cases, but it's emergency room visits, it's other complications. People are having seizures, people are having kidney failure, you know, transiently they're ending up in the hospital. That's why McKnight thinks athletes should skip energy drinks and go for plain old water, or if they need some calories, down a sports drink. Sports drinks are great products. Calories, fluid, electrolytes, the things that athletes need, particularly with prolonged exercise. And that's what our athletes need to be focusing their attention on. This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.